All right, everybody, I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press, and welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the world. I am going to be reviewing John Adams by David McCullough. One of my favorite, if not my favorite, historical writer of all time, David McCullough. He's written some of my, just some just exquisitely awesome, superb books. And I got all of them that he's written. And uh, so we're doing John Adams. Now, if you watched my channel, you know that my, um, I did my review of the um, George Washington biography from Mount Vernon. I actually filmed it at Mount Vernon. I did my review of the Thomas Jefferson biography from Monticello, actually on Monticello grounds with it in the background. This one, I didn't travel to Massachusetts to do the John Adams biography from, from in front of John Adams' house. I just, you know, didn't do it. I'm sorry. I failed. But, you know, anyway, we are going to do the review. So if you want to watch my reviews of the Thomas Jefferson and the um, George Washington bios, just type in my last name, Durfee, into your search engine, and then George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. The, the, video, the reviews will magically appear upon your TV screen. I swear to God they will. Anyway, let's talk about this. You know I love graphic design and um, cover art. So, an illustration, so let's talk a little bit about this cover. Um, the cover was painted by, um, I'm thinking Gilbert Stewart, yes. Yeah, the painting was painted by Gilbert Stewart, and I have actually been to Gilbert Stewart's house in Rhode Island. I've been on Gilbert Stewart Road and been to the house. Um, so, at least I've been to the artist that painted this cover. Have not been to John Adams uh, anywhere of his, his stomping grounds, but it was somewhere in the neighborhood of... So I wore the shirt. Anyway, um, great, great painting by Gilbert Stewart. Uh, I do remember um, in the HBO series, which I have here. And we're going to talk a little bit about the HBO series based off this book. But in the HBO series, I do remember that uh, when uh, John Adams saw this painting, he said, well... At least it's a good reminder of my own decrepitude. That's, that was his thing. And another thing, they, they, they also showed John Adams the... Uh, and this is also a scene from the movie. They, also, they showed John Adams the big, massive painting of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, where all the people that signed it were in the room at the same time. And the dude came unglued. He's like, no, that's not the way that happened. That's not the way that the Declaration of Independence was signed. We were not all there on the same day signing it. We just all signed it at different times when we happened to be in Philadelphia. You know, not all of us were ever in Philadelphia at the same time. We just, we just kind of, it was, got signed over a period of a long time. Not everybody went and signed it on the same day. It's not like they stood in single file line. Anyway, I just thought that those were cool things. The, the book and the TV series go hand in hand. I was reading the book slowly, you know, a chapter or two here and there as I watched my way through the series. That's the second time I've read this book, the second time I've watched this TV series. So if you want, I would suggest doing both. Um... Because both are just excellent examples of the life and times of John Adams. And we start, of course, with any biography. And, and the reason I love David McCullough as a writer is his biographies that he writes. I don't even care if it's about a biography of the Brooklyn Bridge or the Johnstown Flood or Paris. Um, he writes these like they're adventure novels. Like you can just feel the tension and adventure and the dialogue just pops out at you and you can just you just you feel like you're right there in the middle of what's going on and john adams we just feel like we know his family so intimately throughout this we know each one of his children and the struggles they go through and how he felt about them and he wasn't always the nicest father he kind of uh, expected a lot of his kids. And not only that, but a lot of his kids and who they married. Um, you know, he was very 
sort of proud of the station in life that he'd achieved. He was a, a bit of an arrogant kind of guy. Um, and it showed, and there were things that happened to him in his, his life that he really sort of was disappointed in that, you know, he, the entire time the Revolutionary War was being fought, he was in France. Um, he was sort of the guy, him and Benjamin Franklin were sort of the guys that got the French involved in the war, but they were sort of the liaisons between French, France and the Revolutionary War and America to get the French on our side. And and he spent, you know, the entirety of the war over in France while other people were becoming war heroes, like George Washington and um, a lot of people. And, and he kind of always regretted that, that he wasn't there with his friends on American soil when a lot of the important things happened. Um, you can see there's a lot of pride in this man, a lot of sorrow and regret, um, but mostly... The dude stood up for what he believed in. Um, it starts, as you know, as he's a lawyer, he just had this honesty. He had this deep honesty. Um, he just couldn't lie about things. He just had to say things as he felt. And even, even in the beginning of the stories where, you know, he's uh, defending the British um, soldiers against the mob. It's like, you know, the mob is wrong even though he sort of sympathizes with what the mob's goal and objectives are, what they did to the British soldiers were was wrong, and he he's like, okay, I'm I'm going to defend these British soldiers. Everybody hates the British soldiers, and you know we eventually went to war against the British soldiers, but he defended them because it was the right thing to do, and he could he could easily decipher right from wrong, and the and it, and it was. Uh, Happened over and over as he would be, he was his friend Thomas Jefferson, you know. An interesting thing about this period in time is these guys could disagree. I, it's, a, it's a bit of a weird situation where John Adams and Thomas Jefferson could just disagree so violently with each other, just with their words, but yet they remained friends. But yet people like Alexander Hamilton and, and Burr would go to pistol duels. You know, it's just a weird, when you read about these times and these people and, you, and, and how hard they fought for the freedoms that they wanted um, and how hard they, not only did they fight against the British, but they had to fight against each other because not everybody wanted a revolution. In fact, quite a few didn't. And if you read the uh, George Washington biography, or even 1776 by David McCullough, you just see that this was a struggle. Like half of the country just was divided. They were like, we don't care. We're British citizens. We want to stay British citizens. And we don't mind being taxed. And there were guys like John Adams. And, and even John Adams, to a way, was just like, he, he understood. They absolutely understood why half of the country just wanted to remain British. They got it. They understood. They they empathized and sympathized, and but they knew that that there was something better. And and just the way they crafted the Constitution, uh, the Declaration of Independence, and and you get to see the inner workings and the battles that they fought and the votes that they took and how they just the politics that went into all that. And how John and how Abigail Adams just always pushed, always pushed her husband to do better and better and better and to be better and to not back down and not to be a pussy when he wanted to be one. And uh, and all of those things just combined made this for a great read and an interesting study of a person that, I'll be honest, I don't know if I actually liked the guy that much. I, I mean, when I read the George Washington biography, I really liked George Washington as a human. This guy, John Adams, just, he said and did things that I don't know if I necessarily agree with all the time, even politically. And even though he was one of the founding fathers and the second president of the United States, um, he just had so much pride that it was off-putting. Even when, even when he was vice president, he, you could just tell he's like, the vice president doesn't do jack crap. And so I feel like I'm in the most useless post in the planet. Like I, I worked so hard to 
get this country what it is and to make this country what it is and to write these documents and to sign these documents and to fight for this freedom. And now I'm the vice president and the vice presidency is looked at as a big, massive joke. I mean, and he took that to heart. He took that. And, and then, and then when he ran for president, he was just kind of sort of like, you know, if he would have been, if he would have had Twitter, he would have been mean tweeting a lot of stuff. <laughs> people wouldn't you know what i'm saying and uh just all of this stuff that you get from this guy is like do i really like the guy it's kind of like okay i respect some of the stuff he's done it's very much like a trump like figure in that regard is um like i can respect some of the stuff he's done but would i really want to hang out with this dude i don't know Whereas George Washington seemed like a pretty interesting guy and a pretty noble man. And this guy, even though he was honest and noble in his own way, it was just kind of like it was, it was kind of like an arrogance to it. And then um, the Thomas Jefferson biography was almost heartbreaking in the fact that um, here you've got this guy that wrote the Declaration of Independence and owned slaves. And even when I was in, um, and, and John Adams abhorred slavery. That's one thing you can um admire about the guy is he really abhorred slavery he just did not like it did like like talking about it thought it was evil and then his best friend thomas jefferson actually owned slaves and they really kind of butted heads on that issue and they knew both of them knew that eventually the country would come into so conflict over that um in fact they tried to start the conflict back then um the uh the Thomas Jefferson bio, and this especially hit home with me, because I admire Thomas Jefferson for his intellect and his wisdom and the way he thought. And then, but you also had to understand that he owned the slaves. And then um, when I went to Monticello, that was like, you could tell the people that ran Monticello did not like Thomas Jefferson. Because it was, it was more of a, you go on the tour of Monticello and it's all about how evil he was and how mistreated slaves and things like that. Which is true. That is a bad thing. And uh, that's the one good thing about John Adams is he, um, he was against all that. Anyway, just if you want to want, if you don't want to, I, say, I suggest reading the book and watching the series. Um, both are absolute 10 out of 10s. The HBO miniseries of eight episodes and this great book both go hand in hand. They're absolutely both 10 out of 10s. So um, you do what you will with the information. But I think everybody should read the, the biographies of our founding fathers. Everybody who's an American should do it.